leader, uh, even as a freshman, uh, of some of the guys like Chris Rozier and, and Ronnie Thomas and some of the guys that came in from up that area. You know, but uh, Rahi just was a natural leader. He took charge, and it wasn't surprising me that he, um, you know, was elected captain. And 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 one of the things too that uh, that I've talked to David Corley, who coaches our quarterbacks, and David was a youngster when Raheem was a senior, and uh, he just said how great Raheem was with the younger guys, how he really set the example, and how he helped push other people to be as good as they, they could be. And I think that's you know that kind of reflects back to when we really started turning the corner defensively here. We really had some good players and started playing very well. And I give Raheem a lot of credit for for helping us there. You know the fact that he was a two-time captain uh, says a lot uh, about the way the players felt about Raheem, about how much they appreciated uh, his leadership and his ability as a player. But also I think it speaks to as to what he had to endure so far as having a, a knee surgery, a knee injury. He got that against Delaware. You know, he blocked a, a field goal and the guy picked it up and fell on him and, and that was his knee. And, and so I think the players really, and I know the coaches do, I talked to Coach Faganic who coached him and it, we talk about how hard that was for Raheem to, uh, to suffer an injury like that and then to work to come back to be as good if not better than he was before the injury and, and that that says a lot about a young man he was strong he knew how to play low he had the lead leverage all the football techniques you want you want but he gave great great effort and, and uh, just played with a lot of enthusiasm and he demanded that of the other players with him too I mean that that was something with it. he went out there by himself he was one of uh, one of 11 on the defense and he wanted them all to play that well and he and he got a good start when he came in and played on that 96 team and he went on from there Oh, how everyone doing tonight? I just want to give first all praises and honor to God. Uh, I'm going to have to take a little while, even though I'm last. Sorry about that. I know we've been here for a while, but a lot of people to thank. Um, just as Tomlin said, a lot of people that he named, you know, he left a few years before I got here. So a lot of the younger guys that he mentored and so forth was there to mentor me. So it was just great. Uh, guys like Ernest Benjamin, one of his frat brothers, Mike Beverly, they was my hosts. They took me to Ron Harrison and with Jesse Casey, and just business partners now, and just was friends there and sat over at their house. And those guys really just led me to come to William and Mary. And when I decided to come, first thing I did when I drove back up 295 and got there was get my best friend Chris Rozier. Tell them, hey man, this is where we need to go. We could do something here special. And I mean, we worked so hard. Um, me, Ronnie Thomas, and thanks to Ron's dad that was just there with us. We, I'm talking about every morning for two years in high school. You never seen high school kids at 15, 16 years old getting up in the summer at five o'clock in the morning. And I mean, we're in DC, we in the cities, no track. No field. I mean, we in the streets, in the, in the city, in the alley. You know, Mr. Thomas come up with stuff. You know, you run over that alley hill, jump over that tree. <laughs> you know, that's what we was doing at 5 in the morning in, in the summer in, in the city. And, you know, to come up here with those guys and just the Gonzaga contingency. I know, um, speaking of Juan Hughes, Juan was one of the guys that in high school I watched as a high school playing soccer just was great in high school, was great in college, and just to come behind him, even though he's playing football, it's just like, you know, we following behind Juan, he's the man. And, um, and then just going from there, in terms of another guy I like to thank that just took care of me. I mean, a lot of people can't say it as a freshman, I don't really recall walking to class. Uh, I don't recall staying in my dorm room. And that was Alvin Porch. I mean, he just took care of me, just showed me how to be a football player, how to be a student. Um, he even took care of me after I wasn't a student and I graduated. I'm looking for a job. Like, I need to find a job. I didn't make it to the league. What I'm going to do? <laughs> I used to stay over his house every night. Uh, I was just like, that man was like an older brother to me, like an uncle, like a father. That is just everything. Yeah, uh, just wouldn't be up here right now if it wasn't for him and his leadership. Um, just other guys, one in particular, I know we shared a great bond with uh, was Amin Ali. 
You know, it was uh, one of the great things in 1998 when we both became fathers. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about single fathers and it is very tough and how they don't do, but it was always just good to just know and just see and just be there with someone that just at the same time after games, after home games, everybody's getting ready to go to parties, getting ready to go out. He's trying to find a way to get to Delaware. I'm trying to find a way to get to Maryland. And we just want to spend time with our kids and then get back to check in before Steve tells Coach Laycock we wasn't at training table. <laughs> and so um, just sharing that bond with him through the years um, just meant a lot to me. Also another person that I would not be up here with at all if it wasn't for him um, was a guy by the name of Jason Plummer. And a lot of people don't know about Plummer, you know, uh, wasn't necessarily one of Coach Laycock's favorites because he always got in trouble. <laughs> but one thing about Plummer is, as we all say, it was one tribe, one family. He loved his teammates. He loved the game. And um, half of probably my tackles were just a result of just me and him from studying film, just working in the weight room. And we'll stand there, we'll sit there be times. They're coming out the huddle, we're wondering what they're gonna do. Plumber's like, you go line up here, you line up right here, I'll line up right there. Well, I'm saying that to him, and it was always just one of those situations where it was just like, I was able to make the plays that I was able to make because he sacrificed making plays to allow me to be in that spot while he may have took on double teams here, or you know, I might have just got to go against the weakest lineman or so forth, and so. Uh, that's just one person just I know and the funny thing was Plummer was older than me um, I came in as a true freshman you know we played the same position he's older than me and that's the kind of family William and Murray is it's never a situation or instance where we're worried about how good we are going to be as individuals or what we're doing on the field and what our stats are it was always about as Mike said if you come into Zabel you're going to catch an L it doesn't matter who catches the touchdowns, doesn't matter who get the yards, doesn't matter who get the sacks. We win as a team, we lose as a team, and we don't plan on losing that often as a team. Um, just the last and most importantly, uh, I like to thank my family, because without them, I wouldn't be here at all. Like, this is just a celebration of life and everything for us. Uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, you know, one thing that was difficult for me was in 2009, you know, you read a lot of stuff in the papers and you see a lot of stuff on TV with health insurance and things of that nature, but I've, I've always been working, had insurance and everything, and in 2009, I go to the doctors and I get sick and I find out that I got skin cancer. And it's just like, wow, like, hold on, I'm only 31 years old, I'm black. <laughs> What do you mean I got skin cancer? What do you mean I got to wear sunblock? You know, I'm, I don't get tan. And it was one of those things where just the saddest and just hardest experiences of my life turned into best. Because for whatever reason it may be, the insurance company rejected my claim. Uh, when I went back to get my test results from the doctor, like just a picture or imagine you get an envelope from your doctor of test results but they don't meet with you and go over your results and tell you, and you just open up the envelope. And my mother's been a nurse for all my life, 35 years. And all I see at the end of the test results is carcinoma. And then some long seven syllable word in front of that. And I gotta go Google it and see what it is. I don't have any health insurance. I don't know what's going on. You know, I got my little girl to take care of, my house. I got on my own business. I don't know what I'm going to do, how I'm going to make it. And just my family just did everything they could financially, supportively, just everything, anything. Um, guys like Ronnie Thomas just coming over my house every day, just watching games with me, talking with me the whole time until I got to it. Chris Rozier lending me money so I could pay my mortgage, everything. And now I'm just here. And just, I'm healthy. Um, I finished my two years recovery. And I just stress to you, just enjoy life and live it to the fullest. Um, 
I thank all of my family. I love all you guys, because without you, I just wouldn't have been here. Um, just to stress to you, you never know when things are gonna occur that's out of your control, but when you live life the right way, you surround yourself with people that love you, you love them back, you're supportive, you're caring, just everything that William and Mary just trained us to be, you'll get through anything, no matter your situation, no matter how it may seem like it is gonna be in the beginning. In the end, with faith in God, faith in your friends and your family, living the right course, you're gonna be okay. And someday, they're gonna say, you're a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and I just thank you guys.